Well, Mike, as you know, I was trying to delay this as much. as I, could. I, just, I, just, <laughs> I know you I know this was coming. I was trying to dance you're off on it. The, you're holding off on the pain. Okay. okay, so you know, I wrote, I wrote a, uh, I wrote a, um, an editorial this week on, on made, made in the USA. You did actually really, really good article on Made in the USA. Thank you, Dirk. Good, good job. That appeared in yesterday's issue of Quality <laughs> Digest Daily. Uh, uh, really good article. Well, and, and one of the things I talked about was people want to buy American, but only if it's it's a quality if, if it's a quality mm -hmm. product. And and one of the things I touched on was that is that um, basically manufacturers make what consumers want. And yep. one of the things consumers want, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, they want cheap products. Yeah. And, and, and they, they, they don't want to pay a lot of money for product, or they want to pay, they want to pay what they feel a product is worth. And so that forces manufacturers very often to go overseas so that they can produce a product mm -hmm. that, that they're, Con, con, consumers are willing to buy uh, right? at the price point they want. At, right? at, the, pr at the price point they want. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that's generally what kind of the article was about. There was a really interesting comment from one of our readers, uh, Steve Moore. Steve Moore mm -hmm. comments in a lot of our articles. He's really sharp. He says some really interesting things. I want to read you this comment that, uh, that Steve wrote, if we can put okay. it up on the screen there. Businesses exist first and foremost to make a profit, all caps, not to provide the goods or services that they sell. They make a profit by being cost effective at what they do. And I want to focus on that first bit. Okay. Businesses exist first and foremost to make a profit, not to provide the goods and services well, that not, they sell. I think that's provocative. I'm not sure I understand that exactly though. So what he's saying is they, they exist to make a profit, but I mean, you only make a profit through having goods and services to sell. Those things are intricately entwined, are they not? That's what we want to talk about. Okay, all right, <laughs> thank okay. You. Thank you for, for setting that up. I happen to think that's a is a provocative statement because I think we forget the first part of that. Yeah. It's like, we're in business to make money. Make money, sure, we're, sure. We're, we're yeah. in business to make money. I, whatever we sell, I don't care what we sell. We're in business to make, make money is basically the way it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. And how do, you, how do you do that? How important or where does that, that second part of the equation come in? Make goods and products that people want, 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 want to buy. Yeah, but I mean, there, there's also, it, it depends on the industry, partially. You, you had a, 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 a off script you sent to me uh, a couple weeks ago about the steel, steel industry versus the auto industry today. Right, right, right. I mean, there's, there's, there's levels of this at which I think there's a responsibility of industry to, well, is there? Uh, to support where, where you're at, the, the, <laughs> the, the country you're in, the, the people that work for you. I mean. I think Made in the USA does have a resonance. I think it has a lot of resonance for consumers. And I think people do want to, within reason, support that if the deal is a good deal. I don't think people want to, and the other thing is there's levels to this. I mean, it could be Made in the USA, but 95% of the products are made in China or in some other country, and it's maybe finally assembled here in the USA, but really it's a foreign made Product, right. and if you can even know that as part well, of the problem, sometimes actually, too. Well, this is a whole other subject. Yeah. Technically, it can't say made in the USA unless it meets a certain percentage right. for right. formula. Right. Yeah, right. otherwise, right. it can say it's things like assembled yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> waved at in the yeah. USA or whatever. Um, but I, I guess that was that was my uh, my point is, and I think that was Steve's point is first and foremost. A company wants to make money, sure, and so they're going to do it based on on feeding and feeling what their consumers want. And if their consumers want cheap products, well, then but, I've got to make cheap products. Well, here's the thing. I, I mean, uh, you know, law now says that corporations essentially have personhood, right? Right. We've established that. So, living entities do what they're going to do. They survive by feeding themselves, growing, replicating, doing all those things. So if you consider an, an organization, a, an enterprise, a business, a corporation as a living entity, yeah, I mean, ultimately they have to make profit. I mean, that's that's the fuel that, that fuels their survivability. But do they do that at the at the expense of everything else? I mean, do you care about labor practices in the countries in which you, your goods come from, that, that your supplies come from? I mean, I think you should care about that. I think that there should be a, a hand in there to say, well, wait a minute, maybe it's the hand of the consumer, to say, maybe I care about that. Maybe I care about learning. And the problem to me is it's not transparent, it's opaque. So you can't really know half the time about the practices. And that's why I feel like some of the regulation rollbacks are not great things, personally, because I think it, it inhibits transparency into the process and consumers can make their choice then. Well, I, I'm glad you said that because I, to me it, it all, and that's also was kind of the thrust of the article, is in the end, manufacturers do what consumers want. And, and, and 
yes, there is some responsibility, but but it's it's kind of up to the consumers, I think, to push them in that direction. In other words, oh, I, I, I just I you know I just found out that all of your all of your products are made by slave labor. Okay, well, I don't want to buy your products. Well, what happens? Like when that whole expose about. Foxcom, uh, Foxcom, and, yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff happened with Apple. Well, all of a sudden, Apple's like, "Whoa, yeah. <laughs> let's do something yeah. about this because yeah. we're going to lose market share yeah. if we don't do something." Or do they just hide it better? I mean, they, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is part. This is the part of the argument. Yeah. I mean, I think back to the '70s. I, whenever you read your article, I thought back to the '70s and the whole idea of U.S. auto manufacturers who really were not able to compete with a lot of cars coming over from Japan. I mean, that was an era where people first really started to become uh, conscious of fuel efficiency as a big driving right. factor of, of when they how much they want to pay for a car and, and quality. what kind of car they want and quality yeah. as well. Yeah. And I mean, that was a big thing was that I, I know a lot of the US auto manufacturers and nameplates tried to do the made in USA thing as a support for essentially saying, well, we're made in the USA and our quality isn't quite as good and our fuel economy stinks, but <laughs> we're made in the USA. So, right. you know, pay right. at that point 11,000 bucks for a car versus, right. you know, 9,000 for a Toyota. Yeah. And that was an argument that didn't really carry a lot of water with a lot of <laughs> right. consumers. You know, right. we saw Toyota and Honda and some of the other nameplates really come up very quickly at that time in the 70s and 80s. So ultimately, I think you're right. It, it, it's in the hand, I think that's what you're saying. It's in the hands of the consumers to make the decisions and the companies will follow the consumers, not the other way around. But it sounds like you're saying that despite that, that the companies, even if it's not visible, the companies have got some responsibility to try to behave maybe ethically, ethically yeah. using, you know, even if the labor's overseas labor, make sure that it's a safe environment and, and try to keep those things in, in. Well, hey, I mean, the companies are, this is, this is the tension. Companies are gonna try to not be transparent in a lot of this stuff. And right. unfortunately, I think there's, a, there's now a, a movement towards less and less and less transparency. And in these processes, consumers should know. We should be able to know. We should be able to at least try to know as best we can the status of the stuff we buy. And, Cradle to grave. What happens right. to it afterwards, too? That's a big part of this, too. Not just where it's consumed, not, to, not just where it's created, but after it's consumed and used, what happens to it then? Where does it go? I mean, right. but we have to know. We have to at least be able to find out. And if we're increasingly opaque in this stuff, it's not a good thing, I don't think.